Right now, almost everyone who opens a laptop sees one of two things, Windows or Mac OS. That's what the world has gotten used to. Whether you're in the US, Europe, or much of Asia, the software inside your machine probably comes from Microsoft or Apple. These systems have become so common that most people don't even think about them. They just work. They're the digital default, but that's starting to change. And in one place, it's changing fast, and in China, something very different is happening. A few months ago, the tech giant Huawei quietly released a new series of personal computers. They look like regular laptops on the outside, sleek, professional, high performance. But inside, they're completely different. These new machines do not run Windows, they don't use Mac OS, they don't even rely on Android, which most Chinese smartphones still do. Instead, they use something entirely homegrown, something built by Huawei from the ground up, Harmony OS Next. This isn't just a new skin on an old system. Harmony OS Next is a brand new operating system with no trace of US code. It's not based on Linux. It doesn't include the Android runtime. It has no connection to Google services. It's pure Chinese software written and maintained entirely by Huawei. And it's already shipping in real laptops and desktops. That fact alone is a major moment, not just for Huawei, but for the global tech world. To understand why this matters, you have to go back to 2019. That's when the U.S. government placed Huawei on the entity list, cutting off the company from buying or licensing American technologies. Suddenly, Huawei couldn't use Android properly. It couldn't buy chips from Intel or Qualcomm. It couldn't work with TSMC to manufacture high-end processors. It couldn't even use Google Maps or Gmail on its phones. What followed was a dramatic collapse in Huawei's global smartphone market share, which dropped from around 20% at its peak to less than 4% within just two years. But Huawei didn't give up. Instead of retreating, it started rebuilding, not just new phones or new apps, but an entirely independent technology stack. Harmony OS was one of the first major pieces of that strategy. At first, it was meant to power smart TVs and IoT devices. Then it moved to smartwatches, then smartphones, then tablets and cars. Each step brought it closer to being a full replacement for Android and Windows. Now in 2025, Huawei has finally reached the final step, putting Harmony OS on laptops and desktops. And this version, Harmony OS Next, is something new. Unlike earlier versions which still used bits of Android or Linux, this system is fully rewritten. It doesn't rely on any Western libraries or components. It's a clean slate platform that gives Huawei full control from the kernel all the way up to the user interface. Technically, Harmony OS Next is built on what's called a microkernel architecture. That means it keeps only the most essential parts of the system in the core, with everything else running in separate modules. According to Huawei and Chinese cybersecurity firm Kihu360, this design drastically reduces the attack surface, meaning there are fewer places where malware or hackers can break in. They claim it's far more secure than older systems like Windows or even Linux, but since most of the testing has been done inside China, independent reviews from global experts are still limited. What we do know is that performance is strong. According to tests done by China's official software testing agency, Harmony OS Next boots about 32% faster than Windows 11 on similar hardware. It also uses 29% less memory during multitasking. In practical terms, this means the system starts up quickly, switches between apps more smoothly, and generally feels fast and responsive. Early reviewers in China have described using it as almost surreal, familiar and polished, but also unfamiliar. One journalist compared it to walking into a house that looks just like yours, but where every drawer holds something different. The user interface is clean, the transitions are fluid, and built-in apps like Huawei Docs and Pedal Mail work well, but the real challenge is the ecosystem. Right now, the number of native apps for Harmony OS Next is still small, around 4,200 as of early 2025. That's a fraction compared to the hundreds of thousands available for Windows. And many important global apps are missing. There's no native Adobe software, no Zoom. Even WeChat for Business, which is hugely popular in China, hasn't released a full native version yet. Huawei says more apps are coming and that they're working with developers to port them over, but so far there's no public timeline for when the most popular software will arrive.
This means that while Harmony OS works well as a system, it can still feel empty, especially for users who rely on global apps. Huawei's App Gallery, which is the main source of apps for Harmony OS, only includes about 6% of the world's top 1,000 desktop applications. That gap is most noticeable in professional fields like design, education, and enterprise software. If you're a designer who relies on Adobe tools or an international student who uses Google Docs, the Harmony OS environment feels like a clean room. Beautiful, but missing doors. Even so, Huawei is betting that many Chinese users don't need those doors. They've built strong partnerships with domestic software companies. WPS Office, a Chinese alternative to Microsoft Office, now has more than 560 million users. Huawei's own productivity apps are filling in other gaps, and with government support, entire sectors are switching over. In several provinces, public institutions have already started replacing Windows machines with Harmony OS PCs. Banks, telecom regulators, and transportation offices are testing the full Harmony stack. The hardware side of this transition is just as important. Huawei is now producing its own chips, like the Kirin 96C, which powers the latest Harmony OS laptops. These chips are made using advanced 7 nanometer technology, using tools and processes that China has developed internally after being cut off from TSMC. Huawei's Ascend 910B chips, designed for AI tasks, now power more than 1,300 data centers across China. They're not quite as powerful as NVIDIA's top chips, but they're close, within 93% of the performance in some AI training benchmarks. The trade-off is higher energy use and a smaller software ecosystem. The real strength of Harmony OS lies in something else, integration. Huawei has built the system to act as a distributed operating system. This means all devices running Harmony OS can share resources. Things like processing power, memory, storage, input and output. It creates a kind of digital web where your phone, tablet, laptop, smartwatch, and even your smart fridge are connected as one seamless system. For example, you can drag a file from your phone screen onto your laptop with a single motion. You can pick up where you left off on a document from your tablet. You can control a presentation on your laptop from your smart TV or even a wearable. And none of it depends on cloud syncing. It all happens locally over a Huawei's own network protocol, which is faster than Apple's AirDrop according to tests from Chinese tech media. A 2GB file transfer takes just under 3 seconds. Over 230 million devices are already part of this network. Huawei calls it the super device experience. And it's real. It works. But it only works if all your devices are made by Huawei. That's the trade-off. The experience is amazing, but it only exists inside Huawei's ecosystem. If you try to mix in an iPhone, a Windows laptop, or a third-party smartwatch, you lose the magic, that's the price of tight integration, total lock-in, and Huawei is fine with that. Because for them, Harmony OS isn't just about building a better laptop, it's about building a new ecosystem, one that's fully independent from the West. In 2024 alone, Huawei spent more than $4 billion, $300 million, zero cents on developing its OS and chipset technologies. That's more than double what Oppo and Xiaomi spend combined. And they're not the only ones investing. The Chinese government has issued new purchasing rules that encourage public institutions to switch to Harmony OS systems by the end of 2025. They've registered more than 700 patents related to domestic OS development since 2020. Even international companies are taking notice. Microsoft has opened a new research center in Beijing, hoping to respond to the shift. NVIDIA has mentioned sovereign AI ecosystems in investor updates, a term widely believed to refer to China's growing self-reliance. Some U.S. software companies have paused updates to their apps in China, waiting to see what the future holds. A leaked comment from an AWS executive says it plainly, we underestimated how fast China is building a stack we don't control. And that's the real story. Harmony OS isn't just about surviving without Western apps. It's about creating a digital world where those apps no longer matter. A world where all the key software, hardware, and infrastructure are built and maintained inside one country. A world that doesn't rely on Google, Microsoft, Intel, or Apple. A world where the rules are different and the West doesn't get to write them. If that world works inside China, the next question is, where else could it work?
For countries under sanctions or governments that want more control over their data and technology, Harmony OS could be a model, a complete, national digital platform, secure, scalable, and entirely separate from U.S. influence. Huawei isn't trying to get back into the global tech market the way it used to 